Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Raptor Show, powered by DoorDash on Sports Life. I'm Nani the Fan. I'm your host, Wim Lou. A reminder, we are back in studio and streaming live on Sportsnet's YouTube channel, Monday to Friday between 2 and 3 p.m. Hello to people watching. Uh, and I am joined by my producer and co-host and also a YouTube chat frequenter, Alex Wong. How you doing, man? How was the last two days uh, diving deep into the chat? It was great. You know, the Raptor show across all platforms, YouTube, radio, podcasts. We're always trying to service the fans. Yeah, hopefully. But yeah, this recent stretch has really brought back a lot of excitement, at least for me. And I think for the Raptors fan base as well. And really, we're just trying to recapture that 2019 championship feeling. And it's interesting because I feel like the last few years, we always talk about having members of the championship team rejoin the Raptors. Like, let's bring back Serge. Let's bring back Jeremy Lin. I think only I've said that. Only, have we, you? only we have said okay, that. Okay, okay. Yeah. And, and not even me. To be but honest. we do have a member of the 2019 championship team who did rejoin the organization recently, and that's NBA champion Jody Meeks, yes. who's part of the Raptors 905. And you had a chance to speak with him yesterday behind the scenes because it's still a really big collaboration like i'm sure you guys are still chipping in whether it's you jordan lloyd you know malcolm miller these guys chris boucher was on the roster at that time like what were some of the things you guys were doing behind the scenes to try to keep the team engaged sort of like contributing in practice all this other stuff because i mean this is the reason why they hand out rings to everybody like it's a real team effort not just the guys you see on the floor yeah, yeah well you know just like the regular season there's there's 15 guys on the roster, there's, I think there's 12 that dress out, but the guys that aren't in the rotation at the time, you know, we're doing just as much or more to try to stay in shape. Now, it's harder to stay in shape when you're not playing consistently, but, you know, we're playing three on three, we're in the weight room, mm -hmm. we're in a trail on a bike, um, getting up extra countless amount of shots to uh, stay engaged. Uh, but also, you know, on the bench, you can help your teammates when, when they come out. You know, maybe I, Kyle, I saw you know, they're playing you this way on a pick and roll or surge. When you set the screen instead of rolling, maybe pop, you might get a couple open jumpers to help us, you know, win. So just different things like that. Uh, I think I mentioned to Kawhi a couple of times in, a, in the uh, Milwaukee series that they were coming to double him in the post from the top, top area, right? Yeah. So instead of just passing it right away, maybe spin baseline, you might have a layup or you might kick it to somebody else. So different things like that um, that you can use to help your um, your teammate, the mental part of the game uh, that the coach maybe not see because he's thinking of all the other things um, along with the game, like the rotations or the timeouts or, you know, whatever the case may be, the refs, who knows. But as a teammate, you can always have all. Yeah. Well, I mean, damn, you're already sounding like a coach. You know, that's man, <laughs> Maybe, man. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, anyway, I mean, so you guys win the championship. I mean, that thing is amazing. Um, that would just take me through that night, obviously in the locker room, you know, I'm sure your phone's blown up and like just some of the emotions that like, maybe you get a quiet moment between all the celebrating and all that stuff. And you just think about like, damn, like, this is my life. Like I, I'm an NBA champion. I'm sure that was a dream of yours. Yeah. Uh, I think we stayed at the arena for like four hours. So like, <laughs> all of our phones were like, bo not boxed up, but like had the plastic around us up that way. They didn't get away from the champagne. So. Uh, I don't even remember looking at my phone that night. It was just kind of like, it's, it's an unexplainable like feeling. Um, and a lot of people say that they're speechless, but you really are because I know for me personally, like growing up watching uh, like the Bulls, I was a really big Bulls fan, like Michael Jordan, seeing him on the podium, seeing him talk about it to fast forward that it's you. So it kind of seems like a movie, yeah. right? Like your family is there, uh, like my mom and dad were there. Uh, my fiance was there so it was crazy just to be there um knowing that you're an nba champion but it doesn't really hit you at that point because it's like you're so used to the next day okay what time is practice what time is shoot around yeah it's nothing else to do so <laughs> you just celebrate <laughs> so no, no, it's, it's not the party uh, man i know you guys yeah, there was like a team dinner afterwards and like you know people went yeah, to vegas yeah. people went to california i don't know what people did but yeah, I don't know, what were like, your plans at that time? It was a team dinner. So, like, we stayed there probably like two in the morning, uh, West Coast time. So, that's yeah, what, yeah. five. <laughs> and then the next morning, we went to Vegas and then LA. And then we came back and had a, uh, at the parade. And it was like three million people here. So, I'm yeah. like, I didn't sleep. I didn't sleep for three days. So, oh, when I got gosh. back from the parade, I was just like passed out. Yeah. Like, I didn't sleep two days straight. So, it was, it was tiring, but it was great. So, uh I was going to say, like, I, I don't think anyone was prepared 
for that many people to show up and like i think a usual parade i mean i've seen some other videos of like buses zooming through the crowd and stuff like that so like it doesn't usually take five hours but like you guys were like on that on that parade float when you realize how slow you guys are going you're like we got to pace ourselves man like you don't want to like the whole team can't be marcus all at the end you know what i'm trying to say? you know what i mean yeah. it took five hours to go uh like two miles yeah i remember waking up at like seven in the morning that morning because they were like yeah the bus leaves at you know 8 30 everybody be here and i'm thinking like okay we'll be done by you know 12 yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. <laughs> we didn't get to the, we didn't get to the stage until like one or two yeah so i'm like whew. so it was crazy. it was tiring but it was you know once in a lifetime thing so it was, it was great yeah for sure man um and now i gotta ask you you know when you came back on ring night 2019 seeing that banner go up there you know like i'm at the arena all the time because i'm covering the games so like i always make sure to look at the arena you're right up there at the top your name right above surge top left corner man what was that kind of feeling like you wear the ring and stuff you know more than me see i didn't even know that oh no i'm telling you i literally look at that thing every single time i go in the arena like i'm a media but i'm like i'm, I'm a big fan of the team so that's the biggest yeah, thing yeah. that i was a part of just like experiencing and so i always look at that but i mean yeah like what was that night for you and like the ring night and flying into toronto and everything it must have been an incredible experience and it was it was the uh a special night never i'll never forget that you know and i need to actually I just said I need to go back to the arena just so I can see. I haven't been there since. Are you serious? Um, You're like right down the road. I, I promise you won't take you five hours this time. <laughs> I know, right? I need to go back. Um, but no, it was it, it brought back it brought back the memories of growing up. You know, just always wanting that to happen for yourself. Right. Uh, but you, it's it's always a dream, right? But you always feel like ah, oh, this is so far fetched that you'll never get there. But when you do finally get there, it's like, man, this is it. Like the lights are dim. Everybody's watching me except my ring from the commissioner. Um, you know, my family's in the crowd. Everybody's, you know, excited again. And it's just like that last time that you celebrated, but you start thinking about, you know, that night that you won. So it's uh, it's a special moment, definitely. Yeah, no, that's uh you just get goosebumps even just hearing about it, you know? And um I got goosebumps now, see? Or you can't oh. see but <laughs> <laughs> it's a radio show, but I could confirm, man. You got goosebumps. All right. Uh,